welcome to the Life in Him TV show. My name is Pontus J. Back. My name is Ashley Dawn Wells. I live in Fort Myers Beach, Florida. I am a preschool teacher at my church. I teach three-year-olds and I um, teach eight and nine-year-old little girls. And I have a ministry, it's called Inner Beauty 101. It's teaching women that their beauty comes from within and not from their outward adornment or anything that the world pumps through the media and tries to tell them that they need to have. God has already given them their beauty and it's from within. Yes and no. Growing up, I was a believer. Um, when I was a child, super strong, went to church, really had a passionate relationship with Jesus, and got to high school, it was very lukewarm. I read my Bible, not nearly as much as I should have. I would say, God bless you, but I didn't truly understand what God bless you meant. And it was more of a, this is me, than a deep, passionate relationship with Jesus. That changed later on in my life. Oh goodness, um, my life totally changed. There was such a hunger for something more, something more than just going to church, something more than just a casual relationship, casual dating with Jesus. It was a passion that I wanted to be married to Him. I wanted to truly go through life day by day, hand in hand, walking with Him. 2007, I began pageants and was trying to seek fulfillment through that, tried to use it as a witness to young girls and try to teach them, but at the same time it's hard to be doing something you know isn't biblical while preaching the Bible. It's, it's you know, you're walking that fine line, you got one foot in the world, one foot in the Bible, it doesn't work. And through doing that, I kept, there's something more. So I began using that pageant to try to minister to the young girls, thinking that I was doing something, when really God was preparing me for what He was going to do. And did that for a while, realized that the girls really didn't want to hear about Jesus, they wanted to hear about a beauty pageant. And after doing that for so long, God really took that out of my life. Not exactly the way I would have thought he took that out of my life, but he did his way. God always has a way of doing things the opposite of how we want them, how the flesh wants them. And one weekend I was down in Naples with my girlfriend and we decided to go to a little Baptist church. I had been in church my whole life, never been baptized, always wanted to, but it was never the right time. My parents were never there. I didn't have the right outfit. It was very fleshly and materialistic. It had to be the right moment. It had to have the right music playing. And we go to this church. On the way there, God starts speaking to my spirit about being baptized. And I asked my girlfriend, I said, um, have you ever been baptized? She said, no. She says, have you? I said, no. Never really had the right time. So we go to this church. I have no idea why God's starting to put this in my heart. 2008. Go to church, sit down. I'd never been to that church before in my life. I sit down and I'm talking to my girlfriend. They begin worship. We're worshiping just like any other normal service. And the pastor, the entire message was about being baptized, that God had already started working on my heart in the car before I even knew. And so he's talking about being baptized. I'm like, man, God, are you speaking to me or what? You know, do you want me to be baptized? And at that exact moment, the pastor says, we're having baptism today, baptism on the beach. And I always wanted to be baptized outside in water. There's just something about be, being like um, John the Baptist in, in the River Jordan, you know, and, and being in nature. And so I'm like, man, that sounds like God's talking to me. And I figured there was no way. They had already planned this for months and months and months. We were new to this church. And the pastor says, if anybody wants to be baptized, raise your hand. And I look at my girlfriend. I said, do you want to? And she says, I will if you will. And I'm like, man, now it's not about me. Now it's about her. Now I have to because if I don't, God's going to hold me accountable for my sister who I'm leading astray. So I said, okay, if they say, you know, we always have these conditions. God, if you do this, if you do this, if you do this, we don't just say, okay, God. And so I said, God, if you have him point to me, I will do it. 
And at that moment, he says, we have two openings. Two people dropped out. They had everything ready. They couldn't do it. Two people, two, me, my girlfriend, equals two. Not a coincidence. He says, two people dropped out. We have two openings today to get baptized. I said, man, okay, my, my friend says that if I will, she will. So now it's about her, not only me, and there's two openings. And the pastor pointed right in my direction. I said, man. So I stood up, said, I'm getting baptized. Didn't call my parents. My parents didn't know where I was, what I was doing. I said, and I'm a super daddy's girl. My dad knows everything that I do when I do it. So that was big for me to step outside of that. So afterwards, we're getting in these robes and we're changing, we're driving down to the beach. I have no cell phone, I can't call anybody. We walk out to the water, I'm holding hands with my friend. I said, this is really happening, this is what God's doing. We walk out to the water, and I'm a big picture person, everything's about pictures. And I said, man, I'm not gonna have any pictures of this, I can't update my Facebook status. And I was so upset. And so we walk out to the water and Pastor Hayes Wicker, he, the amazing man of God, begins leading us in, in scripture and, and saying what it means to be baptized and that it's not only an act of service, but you're really beginning a new relationship with Christ and beginning um, 2 Corinthians 5.17, a new creation. And I said, okay, God, I'm ready. And I went under that water and every breath in me was gone. And I came out of that water and I was a new person. And it was the most beautiful day of my life. Come home, actually don't go home, go to my girlfriend's house, my friend, sitting at her kitchen table just talking and I knew something was different. I was, I mean, on fire like I'd never been. I was jumping, woo, you know? And I go to my girlfriend's kitchen table and we're talking about what happened. And her friend comes in the room with a little pink photo album. I said, what's that? And she said, this is for you. And it is a picture. It, it's a photo book, step by step, of every moment from me walking from the water to the pastor, being in the water, coming up as a new creation, and walking back picture by picture. God had already prepared her to give that to me. And to this day, it's my most prized possession. Came home, running through the door, screaming, hooping, hollering, shouting, daddy, 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 just screaming. And I uh, showed him the book. and. He started crying. Most amazing day of my life, but it truly took God separating me from everything that I was comfortable with, from my mommy, from my daddy, and really saying, I want you. I want all of you, and I want you right now. I'm not giving you a chance. It's either me or the world. Pick one. And I picked God. Best choice I ever made. Woo, being a Christian life has been the most difficult life it was very easy when I was lukewarm. Being a Christian in high school was so easy. I could have one foot in the world. I could read my gossip magazines. I could wear big makeup and, and wear clothes that were immodest. And I could maybe say a couple cuss words and, and talk like a woman of the world and not a woman of the Bible. It was so easy being lukewarm. But when my life changed and I began a real relationship with Jesus and I really felt the Holy Spirit take over every action that I had, it was the hardest thing I've ever had to do. I didn't have Christian friends. I didn't have anybody that understood what I was going through. At the time, my dad believed, but he wasn't living a sold out for Jesus life. So even my parents, it was hard talking to them because they're like, okay, good for you, good for you. And I'm like, but you don't understand. Jesus is awesome and he's, he's so great. And, and it, was, it was hard. It was like dark and light and it, it didn't, quite work and it was like a sandpaper effect constantly constantly and in the beginning I was frustrated and I'm like God why can't this be easier but the whole time God was sharpening me and that sandpaper was taking off all the layers of junk that had built up over the years and so it was hard but worth it it still is hard every day is hard it's a choice okay am I gonna live for the flesh or am I gonna live for Christ am I gonna pick up my cross every day and am I, and am I gonna walk with it even when I stumble even when it gets really heavy even when it doesn't feel like I can carry it am I gonna keep going or am I gonna say Jesus whatever and, and go with the world and do the opposite of what Christ is calling me to so it's very difficult but it's worth it Yes, I'm in ministry. I do several different things. I have a YouTube. God has really, really pressed upon my heart to spread the message that he's blessed me with because it's not just about me. It's about every other little girl that went through what I went through. And all the struggles that I went are not for, for myself, that's selfish. It's to help other girls not have that happen. 
On Wednesday nights, I'm a part of, it used to be Missionettes, it's called Impact. I have eight and nine year old girls. They're turning 10 this year. Most amazing thing God has given me. And in the past, God told me, well, I thought, it was not God, it was me, thinking pageants. Pageants were the way I was gonna minister to these girls. And God said, no, I'm gonna use pageants to change you so that you'll know what that worldly lifestyle is so that you can preach to eight and nine year old girls so that they won't make those same mistakes. And it's one of the greatest things in my life to be able to minister to my younger sisters. And even God has given me older sisters. I have 50 and 60 year old women that tell me that something I said, which it's not me, it's Christ speaking through me, the Holy Spirit, but something that I said impacted their life in such a way that they decided to live for Christ. And still to this day, it brings me to tears thinking, God, you could use a sinner, a, a, somebody that makes mistakes every day to change this world and to make it a little brighter and to make it a little better. How in the world can you do that? So. Yeah, and Inner Beauty 101 has really spurred out of God just allowing me to use what I've been taught, to use all the lessons and all the junk for Him to make something beautiful with it. So. Inner Beauty Ministry, Inner Beauty 101 Ministry. And I only have three videos on it right now, but it's growing slowly but surely. It's definitely hard when you're doing the work of God. You have that voice of the enemy telling you you're not good enough, telling you that you can't do it, and it's really hard to fight it and to say, yes, I can. Get out of my way. I'm going to stomp on your head. And so it's, it's a daily process, but I have that. I have Twitter, Instagram. Uh, I also have Facebook that they can follow. I definitely have a message for teenage girls of today and women and young girls that are reading these filthy magazines that are telling them the opposite of what God's telling them. God tells them that their beauty is a gentle and quiet spirit. The world tells them that the, their beauty is a loud spirit, a, a, a Delilah that's trying to seduce men of, of this generation and, and wear immodest clothing and wear uh, distasteful outfits and, and paint their faces like clowns and get plastic surgery and the world really tries to take everything that God's placed in them away. I know I was in pageants and and there were people that said I needed plastic surgery, that I wasn't pretty enough, that I needed to have face work done, body work done, that I needed to change who I was and who God created me to be. And that's not what God has in, in these young girls that are cutting themselves because the world has just blasted so much junk into their minds that they can't understand their real beauty. They, they look in a magazine and they see airbrushed people that don't exist. Even the models don't exist. They take a picture. They starve themselves for months and months and months. They take this picture. Then these artists come in and digitally enhance every imperfection that these perfect models have. And they airbrush them to look like a totally different person. I have a girlfriend who's done modeling and and she knows the dark sides of it and, and talking to her and she's like, yeah, that, that doesn't even look like me. That, do, that doesn't look like me either, but that is me. It started with me and they changed it into something else. But these girls don't know that. They look at these pictures and it's their Bible. They think, this is the way I'm supposed to look. I'm supposed to have blonde hair, I'm supposed to have blue eyes, I'm supposed to look like a Barbie doll, which is a piece of plastic, probably created by a man to look a certain way that the, world has told him a woman needs to look at. Back in the day, women didn't consume themselves with these things, these materialistic things, these fancy designer clothes and fancy makeup and hair extensions and, and color. They were natural, they were beautiful, and the men loved them for it. And God tells us that our beauty should come from inside. It shouldn't come from outward adornment. It should come from your charm and, and being a woman after the Lord's own heart. It shouldn't come from being a, a haughty spirit that is all about succeeding and is all about how many men can I cause to lust after me? How many men can I cause to stumble? You're not building up the body of Christ. You're actually tearing it down. And who's receiving the glory for that? God or Satan? Because Satan wants those men to stumble. Satan wants those women to not see their true beauty that God has placed within them. Even the, the women that have maybe done something, maybe they have plastic surgery, maybe they have cut themselves, maybe they've given away what God has told them not to give away. The world's telling them that there's not redemption, that the world's telling them that there's not salvation, that they can't, they can't change, that they're stuck with that, but they're not stuck with that. God is not a God of, okay, well, that's too far gone. I can't fix that. God's a, a God of, 
I don't care how far it goes, I'm still gonna fix it and I'm gonna make it more beautiful than the world ever fathomed it being. I do think that all people are beautiful because God created all of them. I think it's really amazing that in the Bible it says God spoke everything to existence except us. He created us. He molded us in our hands. He formed us. He put every little hair on our head. He put every little characteristic that we would have inside of us and He formed us. He didn't speak us into existence, but He formed us and every single person's different. I'm different. I have a freckle on my lip. I have a freckle in my eye. I, I am silly sometimes. I do all these weird things that the world says isn't beautiful, but I know it's beautiful because I know Jesus and I know the Word of God and I, it's written in my heart and I know that these little things that the world doesn't like, they don't like them because they're Christ. And the world opposes everything that is of Christ. And these women, I don't care if you're 700 pounds or 200 pounds or 50 pounds, you're still beautiful because God created you. I don't care if you have scars. My head went through a windshield when I was in middle school. I had a ton of stitches from here to here. My whole face was cut wide open. Scars are beautiful. It shows us that we have a story. It shows us that God took something and he fixed it. And but the world really, really has no idea what beauty is. It's so fixated on, on magazines and what sells and clothing and makeup and plastic surgeons. They want to make money. They want to tell you you're not perfect. They want to tell you, oh, your nose, it, it needs work. Well, well, your nose was created for you to breathe. You get that work, you're not going to be able to breathe as good. And the world has no idea the power that God has given you as a child of God, when you truly understand how beautiful you are and you operate in that, you allow everyone else to operate in their beauty too. Yes, I do believe everyone is beautiful. No matter what they look like, no matter what they think of themselves, they're beautiful. And if they don't believe it, they need to open up the Word of God because He'll clarify that. I would say that you're beautiful, that God created you, He formed you with everything that is on you, everything that you are, to be His vessel and to carry His love to everybody around. And that no plastic surgeon, because if they don't know the Word of God, which I'm assuming they don't, they can't tell you your beauty because they don't know it themselves. Only God can show you how beautiful you are, how He created you, how He formed you, how He knows every single hair on your head, how He knows every eyelash, how He knows every twinkle that's in your eye. And no plastic surgeon, no beauty magazine, nothing in this world can ever tell you that you're beautiful because only God can. Because He created you, He made you, He formed you in His hand. Every single thing about you is perfect. It's made exactly the way that He wanted it to be made. Not the way that a person does because we're all sinful, we're all flawed, we all have things that, that God's working on us every day with. But God made you to be perfect for His perfect will that you are going to find out and that He's going to use to totally change and transform this world. If somebody doesn't know God, if somebody doesn't know the way to salvation and they're sitting there thinking, I'm lost, I don't know what I'm doing, I'm going around in circles, I'm trying to eat whatever the world's giving me and, and I'm not full. I'm sick because it's junk food and, and I'm not full and I really want some meat and potatoes and some good food that's going to stick to my ribs and that's going to be a part of me. I would say that first you need to get on your knees and you need to say, Jesus, I love you. And maybe I don't know who you are, but I want to. I want you to come into my heart. I want you to come into my life. I want you to take all the ugliness out of me and place it with your beauty. I want you to show me how to live as a vessel for you. I want you to show me how much you love me, how you died on the cross on Calvary for my sins. While I was still a sinner, you loved me so much that you gave everything that you had for me and that all I want is to be a part of you. When you say that prayer and you say, God, come into my heart, change me, take everything I am and make it for you, make it for your will, allow me to walk in your will, allow me to walk in your steps. Father God, no matter what this world throws at me, I'm deciding today to follow you, to follow your word, which is the Holy Bible, which is through Jesus Christ, the only way to salvation, God's only begotten son that he gave for us as a, a love offering for us because he loved us so much that he knew we were destined for hell, but he grabbed us right before we got there. And he said, I love you and I have something better for you. And that's my son, Jesus Christ. I want you to live with me in heaven. And if you open up your heart and you truly lay your your life at the foot of the cross and say, Jesus, take me, make me, mold me. I want to walk with you. I want to live with you. God will do exactly that. Thank you.
Jesus, you are holy. Jesus, I love you so. You are my everything. I love you so. Let me sing a love song. Let me sing to you. Let me sing from my heart. 